my name is Anna. I'm the clinical practice specialist from Sensing Future Technologies. Today I decided to record a short video uh, to talk about a very exciting topic um, today uh, on balance rehabilitation, which is uh, perturbation-based balance training. Okay? So as a physiotherapist, uh, one of my favorite functions of kinesim is the ability to train um, reactions. Um, so our reactions to this normal disturbances of daily life. Um, these movement reactions, movement strategies that we use are fundamental um, in response to sudden perturbations or even um, in a fit forward in a preparation for a voluntary movement. Uh, normally, um, we train a lot with our patients these movement reactions in the fit forward uh, control mode, not as much the reactive uh, responses to the perturbations. Um, and so there are a lot of um, situations where uh, we can have impaired movement strategies in response to balance perturbations, and we can have um, sequencing problems so um, in the activation of the correct muscle synergies, for example, in the co-activation of both anterior and posterior muscle chains, uh, we can have problems with the time reactivation of postural responses when the response happens but is delayed and so is not effective on uh, avoiding a, a loss of balance, a, a fall, or problems adapting postural uh, activity um, in response to environmental changes or different tasks. Uh, so here um, we are talking about mostly uh, sensory reweighting, a sensory organization, and we, we can have um, dysfun dysfunctional movement uh, strategies um, with uh, these problems behind. Um, a way that we have to tackle this is exposing the patient to repetitive sudden balance perturbations. But a very important uh, aspect of this is that these perturbations should mimic uh, daily life uh, perturbations that we feel on our normal daily life activities. And so let me show you how we can train this with kinetin. So we have a module that uh, it's called activities where we have a wide range of different activities that we can use to train this type of movement strategies, okay? So for example, we have a buzz ride. Uh, everybody has, uh, in some, at some point of, of their life um, went on a buzz, a buzz ride and so this is quite common. We can adjust the intensity of the disturbances, which is also an important aspect of the training uh, within a, a clinical context. Okay, so what I'm training is my movement reactions to the disturbances of the platform that mimic the disturbance felt during this buzz ride, exactly this buzz ride. And you can see here, there is the center of pressure position and on my base of support, and so I'm trying to control my center of pressure within my base of support. At the same time, as I am performing the activity, um, the force plates are measuring uh, my center of pressure displacement, which means that um, they measure my response, okay? So we can adjust the intensity if we want to, um, and of course, uh, if, we were, if we are working with patients, we can start with a lower, in, lower intensity, sorry. Um, we have the support of the bars and in some case, you should use an harness also to protect the patient for, from falling, okay? And so, let me just show you here some topics. Um, in fact, is that this type of training has been showing the, um, that it's if, if very effective um, on improving uh, movement strategies. Um, it is shown that it can reduce uh, the delay in the activation of the postural responses. It can create more stable reactive trunk movements and reduce center of mass displacement. So the, they can con the patients can control 
better their position and movement of their center of mass within the base of support. And most important of all is that these changes are it seems that these changes are sustained over time. Um, and so it seems like it's a very uh, efficient uh, way of training bowels. So thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to follow us and don't forget to register uh, to our next webinar um, that is going to happen on the 25th of July. Thank you.